Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for the Papal State for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So the Papal State is a nation located in central Italy and as the name suggests we are literally the Pope. In 1444 we start off as the Curia Controller which gives us some very very nice bonuses like stability discounts, a diplomat, prestige, advisor discounts, tech discounts, most importantly minus 20% AE impact. We can appoint cardinals, everyone likes us, and we also have a unique government form which is the papacy, which gives us plus one tolerance of the true faith and plus 0.33 prestige per development from missionary along with a lot of clergy influence. All the papal government reforms are awesome, we have a pretty cool mission tree here that requires us to conquer, convert, and get friendly with catholic nations and our amazing national ideas will help us achieve all that because we have plus one diplorep, plus 25% religious unity, plus 5% discipline as a finisher. Then we got Tolerance of the True Faith, Tax, Prestige Decay, Cost of Fabricate Claims, Production Efficiency, Free Diplo Policies, and even more AE Impact. By playing as the Papal State, you'll dominate Italy and maybe even Europe in no time, and you have lots of different ways to play, whether you want to play tall, play wide, convert everything either directly yourself or through subjects or through friendly nations, and you're going to have a lot of fun. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guys like this or more EU4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything let's take a look at what we need to do as the papal state all right all right here we are as the papal state and we start off with this 112 guy who luckily is pretty old and he is gonna die soon and the first thing we're gonna want to do this campaign is actually join the hre that's because we'll want to fight these guys over here who are already part of the hre and we'll want to stay in there at least until 1460 where all the other italian guys leave and we're also gonna have to go and fight naples because as you all know, Aragon does let them break free pretty soon after the start of the game. Now one thing you might consider doing is giving a Papal Bull over here once you collect 400 in the Korea coffers, but don't do that. We'll only be selecting a Golden Bull after the Renaissance spawns because we want it to spread through Cardinals. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can select whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy Religious State and Clerical Advisory Council, along with Religious Diplomats. We're gonna give the Nobles primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors, and we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the burghers. Then we can sell titles and seize land because we had a lot of crownland. Now even though we're not making that much money at the start, we will be hiring three advisors right off the bat, and it's not gonna be a problem at all. Get whichever level one admin advisor you want, I'm gonna get this tax guy right here, get a diplo rep or improve relations diplo guy, I do have a level 2 diplo guy so I am gonna hire him just to help me make some alliances and then I'll swap him out for this improved relations guy and then get a morale or a discipline level 1 mill advisor. I'm gonna get this morale guy. Now it's time for some alliances and as the Pope we can ally a lot of nations. What I recommend doing is of course allying Austria right off the bat and you will be able to do it because we do want to enter the HRE and then try and ally some northern Italian nation like Savoy or Milan. One of those two would be pretty good. I can't ally either of them right off the bat so so I'm gonna improve with Milan right here. And then get another big ally, someone like Castile or France would be nice. Let's see here in my case, I am gonna improve with Castile. So those should be our relations. Austria, a northern Italian nation like Savoy or Milan, and then another big nation. Now it's time to kickstart our mission tree slightly by trying to accomplish this mission right here and this mission right here. And for that, we need to be friendly with Switzerland and with Lithuania. So with the remaining diplomats, start improving relations with Switzerland. You can even ally them if you want to, although I don't think it's necessary. And you should also start improving relations with Lithuania. That'll unlock these branches of the mission tree. We need to get allies for this one and we'll get this one later when we're rich. Next, you can go ahead and add some rivals and you want to rival the nations that have pretty much rivaled you already, a nation that we want to conquer, like Provence and like Florence, and then the third one doesn't really matter, I'm gonna rival Savoy simply because they've rivaled me. Next, you can go into your military tab and slack in recruitment because we are gonna be hiring mercenaries and we don't want to waste that manpower, and you can go ahead and recruit the free company wherever. Next, you can tell these two light ships to protect trade in Genoa and go home during war and then build up a couple of more light ships 
I would recommend 10 and don't worry that we're gonna be going over force limit. As you can see after you unpause you will be able to enact a golden bull but like I said don't do this yet we want to wait for the renaissance to spawn. After you've allied Austria start improving relations with them as well because we do need our relations to be 141 as we can see right here to enter the HRE. At this point you can lower army maintenance just like this and turn off your fort because we do want to save a little bit of money before we start getting into wars. Now that I've secured my alliance with Milan over here by improving relations with them I am gonna start spying with the last free diplomat and we are gonna start spying on Aragon right here so we can get claims on Naples. At this point I can also ally Castile and that's my alliances pretty much sorted. Yours should look a little something like this too, maybe you've also allied Switzerland. Once you do get three allies you will be able to take this mission right here where we gain some diplo points. Once you free up another diplomat start spying on Siena. Once you've improved with Switzerland up to 100 and this will be easy unless they rival you which does happen sometimes you will be able to take this mission right here where the Swiss Guard mercenary company becomes available to us and we also get plus 10% merc discipline for 20 years. There we go, they will defend the church well. And this merc company also does not cost us army professionalism when hired. Once you've improved with Austria enough, you will be able to join the HRE and you should do that. After that, you can use the diplomat that's been improving with Austria to improve with Lithuania. And once you gain a little bit of manpower after the game starts and once you complete this mission, you will be able to take the mission Catholic Volunteers, which gives us a general with 60 tradition, which is pretty nice. You can put him in charge of your army. Mine's pretty good right here. You can also tell the diplomat that's been improving with Switzerland to spy on Provence. Once you improve up to 100 with Lithuania, you will be able to take this mission right here, and basically Lithuania will start converting all of these Orthodox provinces to Catholic. This branch right here basically helps other nations be more Catholic and stuff like that. Once you improve with Lithuania, you can use that diplomat to improve relations with the Holy Orders, which are basically the Livonians, the Teutons, and the Knights. Start with whichever one has the highest opinion of you, and then improve with those all of these are 50 in my case so i'll just start improving with the livonians for no particular reason at this point you can also start building five more galleys and there we go a couple of years after the game starts you will get the neapolitan succession event where aragon is gonna let naples go 99 percent of the time and that's precisely what happened in my case by this point you should have built up at least one claim on naples and i have on the province of naples itself after this happens naples will have of course no allies whatsoever and that's the moment where you should raise army maintenance activate your fort and declare on Naples immediately. You will be able to defeat them by yourself. You can call on an ally if they're willing to come, but there's totally no need. Of course, there's another event that pops up that gives us a subjugation CB on Naples, where basically they want us to vassalize them, but they're too big for vassalization anyway, and we're just gonna take provinces from them anyway, so no need to wait for that event. Declare on Naples immediately. Of course, prior to that, you should check and see if you can excommunicate them, but that doesn't really happen too often. So if you can, excommunicate them and then declare. If not, simply go ahead and declare a regular war. And there we go. That's our first war started. It may have happened a little earlier for you or a little later. It doesn't matter. It's still the first war. Since it might be a siege race, you may want to activate the defensive edict in your capital. There's not really a need, but why not? And once this very quick and easy war is done, here's what you're going to take from Naples. As you can see, I've managed to full siege them before they even got one of my provinces. So when piecing out Naples, I do recommend taking the capital which is basically the most valuable province it's a center of trade and it has a monument as well that we might put to use later but don't take too many provinces I would say go up until around 30 to 40 AE because we will be fighting other Italian nations we don't want to get coalition of course you could do something like this and take a bunch of provinces if that's what you want to but what I recommend is like I said taking their capital and then one to three more provinces maybe you want to do something like this Maybe you can do something like this. Maybe take the entire area over here. It's totally up to you. And that's precisely what I'm going to do right here. Don't take money or war reps, nothing else. We want this truce to be over as soon as possible. So take the capital and whatever else you want up until 30 to 40 AE. And that's our first war done. At this point, I'm improving with the Teutons and the Knights, and I'll also start improving with own subject countries and outraged countries. And when the Renaissance spawns, you might have a chance to spawn it, just like it happened to me right here, and you do gain some nice bonuses 
basically 100 of each admin point, 20 prestige, and gov reform progress. So that's pretty nice. It, this doesn't usually happen to me, so it's pretty nice that I've gotten it. Of course, if you spawn the Renaissance, then that's great. You might be able to embrace it right away. If not, you'll get it quickly since it spawned in Italy anyway. And when the Renaissance does spawn, I do recommend activating the Encourage Development State Edict in your capital right here and deving Rome up to 30. You should do this even if you spawn the Renaissance yourself, because we want to take off the age objective for a province with 30 dev. So just bump it up once in admin and dip, and then a couple of times in mill, and you'll be all set. Of course, only do that after you've gotten tech 4 in every category. When you do embrace the Renaissance, you will be able to take this mission right here, found the Vatican Library, where this event happens. And you can choose basically one of these three options, get an admin tech discount and minus 2 national unrest, get a diplo tech discount and plus 1 diplo rep, or get a mill tech discount and plus 50% army tradition from battles. Now, depending on what your goals are for this campaign, you can choose whichever one of these you want, whether you're playing tall, playing diplomatically, or through conquest, but most likely you're going to be choosing this last option because I do think it's the best and you would probably agree. So this is definitely the one to go with, but you can choose one of these two if your goal is different. Of course, you should offer knowledge sharing to whichever nation will accept. Try and find the richest one. Castile will give me 1.94 ducats. Austria will give me 1.69. England will give me 2.84. So I will sell it to them first. At this point, you can also set some provinces as provinces of interest right here, mainly Arezzo, so your subjects can spy on it. After you improve with all the three orders up to 100 opinion, you might be able to take the mission support the orders if your nobility loyalty is greater than 60 and their influence is lower than 50. You'll gain some army tradition. I can't do that in my case because as we can see, while well, the nobles aren't quite right. For your tier 2 government reform, there are two good options in my opinion. The first one being the external mission, which gives us plus 10 percent manpower recovery speed and you would choose this if you're planning on playing wide and conquering a lot of stuff and then we have the commercial mission which gives us plus one merchant and plus 10 percent global trade power you would select this if you're playing tall ish maybe conquering all of italy and then the valencia and ragusa trade nodes something like this playing a tall campaign so whatever your plan is for the campaign either go with external mission or commercial mission i'm gonna go with commercial because i'm planning on this being a tall campaign so one of these two. If you did select commercial mission, just like me, you can tell your third merchant to collect in Venice. And you could tell him to establish communities as well to reduce aggressive expansion. Once you've cored everything up that you took from Naples, it's time for your second war and it's gonna be versus one of these three nations, depending on whichever is the easiest to fight. Siena, Florence, or Provence. Once again, before declaring your war, go ahead and check to see if you can excommunicate any of the nations you're about to fight. I can't do that in my case, so it doesn't matter. And declare on whichever one is the easiest. In my case right here, Florence would be the easiest, but I still don't have a CB on them, so I am gonna go ahead and hit Provence because very, very luckily, they're not allied to France anymore. And this might happen in your game too. If they're allied to France, don't worry, you can still catch them off guard at a certain point. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare on Provence for the conquest of this province right here. And since they do have a quite a few allies, I am gonna call in Castile and Milan to help me out. And that's my second war. Like I said, either Provence, Siena, or Florence, depending on whichever is the easiest to fight. At this point, I am also gonna enact a golden bull, and that's gonna be this one right here, where the cardinals spread an institution. You can change this every time your current ruler dies, or whenever a new courier controller pops up. And I'm just gonna white piece Naples here, since I want to cut my truce short. At this point, my war with Provence is pretty much done, and I'm ready to peace out. And if you're fighting Siena, of course you're gonna full annex them. If you're fighting Florence, I recommend only taking Pisa, since these are extremely highly developed provinces, and you don't want too much AE, so only Pisa from Florence. And if you're fighting Provence, you should take all three of these provinces right here, and get this entire area, and then you can humiliate them if you want to. If you have enough war score, I don't then you can get war reps and money. And that's your second war done. Either you'll have this, Siena, or Pisa. Now it's time to chill a little bit more, AE is growing, so improve with outraged countries, and I'm also gonna tell this guy here to establish communities. After you finish your second war, 10 years in the game should have passed, and at this point you will be able to annex your subjects. And you've probably gotten 190 relations with at least one of them, I have it with Urbino, and before you annex them of course, give the nobles the nobility integration policy, so we don't lose Diplorep when we annex them, and you can go ahead and start annexing whichever subject you want. For your first idea group as the papal state, no matter what 
kind of playthrough you're going with, whether with a wide one or with a tall one, I recommend opening up with Divine Ideas. This is a unique idea group for Theocracies and we can get Dev Discounts and Devotion. Minus 10% fire damage is super strong. Cost of reducing War Exhaustion minus 33% and the Leader Discount is great. The morale is awesome. We probably won't be using the Culture Conversion too much, but the Unrest and the Manpower in True Faith Provinces means we get basically plus 20% National Manpower from this. And it does have pretty nice policies with other idea groups that we're gonna take. So, Divine Ideas for your first idea group. After this, you can focus on Mill. As you all know, at some point during the game, the Ottomans will declare war on Albania, and because Venice guarantees Albania always, they always get dragged into that war. And when this war happens, when the Ottomans fight Albania and Venice, is precisely when you should also declare on Venice. Now, Austria will probably help you out, along with her other northern Italian ally. My alliance with Milan broke when we were fighting Provence, they made them break it with me, so I don't have a northern Italian ally, but when this happens, go ahead and declare war on Venice for the reconquest of your core right here. You may be able to beat them by yourself if the alliance situation is something like this. However, if all of their allies come in, you will need Austria's help. So if you're ready and if everything is going according to plan, go ahead and declare. When the Shadow Kingdom event fires, basically when the Italian nations decide to leave or stay in the HRE, you should go ahead and check if any nations have stayed. And in my case, they haven't. However, if they have stayed, you should stay as well so you can fight them without fighting Austria. And if you're allied to Austria, you can also stay. So if your situation is a little something like this, you can choose to do whatever you want. I will stay because I do want to keep being friendly with Austria, but if my alliance with them is ever broken, I will leave the HRE. We will lose prestige for this, but it's fine. And when your war with Venice is done, depending on how much war score you have, here's what I recommend taking. Of course, you should take back your core in Ravenna right here, and then I also recommend taking these two provinces right here. They are highly developed, they produce paper, this is a center of trade as well, so those are some nice provinces to get and then you could get one or two more provinces over here depending on your aggressive expansion but if they still own provinces over here you could also take some of those and release the nation of Dalmatia that has cores on a bunch of these provinces right here which you could later use to reconquer their cores from Venice or from Hungary and Croatia. What I'm gonna do in my campaign here is take Ragusa because they do own it right here as we all know it's a super super powerful province and I'm gonna release Dalmatia from that. I'm not gonna take a whole lot more because we don't want aggressive expansion to get too high because of course we will be fighting other Italian nations as well. So your core back, a couple of provinces up here and then if you want to, something over here to release Dalmatia with. And I'm also gonna accumulate them and get war reps and some money. And that's my war with Venice done. Your conquest should look a little something like this as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and release the nation of Dalmatia from Ragusa. They have cores on five more provinces over here, these provinces. For your naval doctrine, I recommend selecting either Fjordsman for galley combat ability or Merchant Navy for ship trade power. I am gonna get the trade power. In my case, my third war was with Venice, but if you still don't have an opportunity to declare on Venice, then you should continue fighting the initial nations that we were already planning on fighting, like Provence, Florence, Siena, and Naples. After your third war, your economy should be in a pretty good state, and you will have paid off your original loans, so you can go ahead and take some new burger loans and start building buildings. Of course, the most important building you initially want to build is the marketplace, so I'm gonna put one in Rome right here, one in Naples as well, one right here in this province that I conquered from Provence, in Urbino too, since it is a center of trade, and let me check if I have any more provinces to build them in, in Verona as well, but I'll only do that once I core it up. At this point, I'm also gonna annex my second subject. For your first stage ability, you should of course select Justified Wars. Of course, you should also be upgrading your centers of trade when you do have the money to do so. For your tier 3 government reform, all of these are pretty nice. The average monarch lifespan one is good. Education of the court for minus 15% advisor cost is really, really strong. We will have insanely cheap advisors as the Pope with this. This one is the most mid in my opinion, unless you're planning on doing a whole lot of conquering for that missionary strength and then education of the people for the idea and institution spread is pretty nice too. I recommend education of the court the most, so that's what I I'm gonna go with here. At this point our advisors are about 35% cheaper along with the 25% from the estate privileges we're already at 60% advisor discounts and at this point you may be able to start running level 2 advisors. So I am gonna get this morale guy right here, this trade efficiency guy right here and this production efficiency guy right here as well and we're still making a whole lot of money. Once you've chilled a bit and aggressive expansion has cooled down it's time to continue your conquests and after you've already done three wars you can pretty much expand into any region in Italy. In my case right here, Naples have even taken back some of their cores in Sicily. You could declare on Naples and vassalize them and use them to reconquer their cores from Aragon or Castile later on. In my case 
also Sardinia has popped out, so that's an expansion opportunity for me. Basically, look for the easiest nation to fight with a slight preference towards subjugating Naples or conquering these provinces up here, which we do need to conquer for this mission right here. So, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and declare on Ferrara right here, and I am gonna call on Austria to help because we do have a pretty big Savoy here. And like I said at the start of the game, you should keep doing this the entire game, check to see if you can excommunicate anyone before you fight them. I'm simply gonna make Savoy return some cores to Milan, just to make them weaker. And with that, my war with Ferrara right here is done. Of course, always pay attention to aggressive expansion when conquering in Italy, and I'm only gonna take these two provinces right here and not full annex them for the AE, and because we don't really need this one right now, because we want six provinces in one of these two areas. So, we'll get a claim on this one later, and on all of these, so that's why I'm only taking these two and their money. And that's my war with Ferrara done. At this point, aggressive expansion isn't bad at all, and we have expanded quite a lot. At this point, now that things have calmed down a little bit, I will be continuing my conquests. You should be doing the same, once again, finding opportunistic wars, mainly in Italy. Maybe you could declare on some small Balkan minor nation right here and reconquer Dalmatia scores if you have them, but if not, you're primarily gonna be fighting in Italy, at least until you get some of these provinces, so you can spy on Tunis, and if you can catch Tunis weak enough, you might declare on them as well. In my case, they're allied to the Ottomans, so that's not going to be happening. In my scenario right here, I am going to be declaring on Florence, because they have gotten fairly strong, they have all of Tuscany, so we do need to knock them down to size a little bit. And I'm going to declare for Pisa right here, and call on Austria, just so I can use their navy to help me go beat up Sardinia. And that's my further war started. You may be fighting some of the northern guys, this may be a right opportunity to fight Provence, you may be hitting Venice if they're fighting the Ottomans, or you may be fighting Naples. Now that I've defeated Florence, let's check and see which provinces I can take without getting too much aggressive expansion. Of course, the most valuable ones are Luca, Pisa, and Florence because of their centers of trade, and Siena because it produces glass, or maybe even gems if they got faceting. You may of course already have Siena if you fought them first, but it doesn't matter, just go ahead and check and see. And if I take Luca right here, it's only 11 AE, and with Pisa it's 21, we're still good, no coalitions, and with Florence, it's only 35. If you've excommunicated them, it's even less, so take as much as you can when fighting anyone, while also keeping an eye out on aggressive expansion, because even if we don't get coalitioned, that aggressive expansion will prevent us from expanding even more. So we want to pop off a few small wars here and there instead of one or two big ones where we take a lot. And that's my war with Florence done. After we opened up with divine ideas for our first idea group, for your second idea group, if you're planning on playing a tall campaign, like I said, you should go with trade ideas. If you're planning on blobbing out a whole lot and conquering whatever you want, maybe pushing into other continents as well, then you should go with religious ideas or maybe admin ideas as well. So, trade for tall, and religious for wide, maybe admin. I'm gonna go with trade, because like I said, this is a tallish campaign that I'm doing. Once you have 500 ducats and no loans, you will be able to take this mission right here, which is pretty nice. And because we have a lot of money in the Curia treasury, you will also most likely be able to take this mission right here, where we gain some prestige. Now that things have cooled down a little bit with aggressive expansion, I will be continuing my conquests, this time declaring on Bologna, and I'll be most likely full annexing them, but most importantly, I'm getting this province right here, so I can unlock the mission Patrimony of St. Peter, where we gain some further claims by owning six provinces in these two areas. So, I'm fighting Bologna, you could be fighting any nation in Italy like I said, maybe a Balkan miner, maybe in Tunis if they're weak enough. And now that my war with Bologna is done, I will be full annexing them. Once you get 6 provinces in Emilia-Romagna and Marcia Abruzzo, you will be able to take the mission Patrimony of St. Peter, where we gain further claims on these provinces right here. For your tier 4 government reform, if you're going wide and planning on conquering a lot, you should take Head of the Catholic Church, where we gain some additional bonuses while being Defender of the Faith besides the ones we are get. Religious Diplomats doesn't have an impact on influence or absolutism, so we get that privilege for free, and we also gain Devotion, Absolutism, and minus 10% appoint cardinal cost. So, take this if you're planning on going wide, and if you're planning on playing tall, I think you should take curtail clerical privileges, because the clergy are already really influential, and we also gain a nice minus 10% admin tech discount. So, this for blobbing, and if you're not blobbing, take this. You could also go with maintain balance of power, that one's not bad either. At this point, you should be continuing your conquests. Once again, in Italy, like I said, in my case, I'll declare on Sardinia right here. 
During all this time, while we're conquering the Italian nations slowly, of course, maybe a little bit quicker if you're excommunicating, you should be improving your nation. This whole time, I'm taking out burger loans, building buildings, getting richer, paying them off, getting bigger loans, and this is what my economic situation looks like at this point. I'm making about 20 ducats a month, a lot of it is from trade, I've upgraded all of my centers of trade that I own to level 2, and I have marketplaces in every center of trade province. The ones in the non-center of trade provinces were of course built by the AI and not by me. I have a bunch of workshops going as well in the high value trade good provinces, and in my opinion high value trade goods are any trade goods that cost them more than 2 ducats. For example, like paper, 4.37, or cloth. 3 ducats, glass, that's 3, so you don't want to build workshops in livestock provinces or even wine, even though wine is a little bit more expensive now, you shouldn't build them in grain, salt is a pretty good one, it gives you 3, so that's the high value trade good provinces. I have a couple of churches going as well, a few navy buildings, a few army buildings, you know what it is. At this point, because I got trade ideas and because we took something else, we got an additional merchant. We now have five merchants. One guy is collecting in Venice, but most importantly, he's establishing communities for improved relations. And then I have three guys transferring from Valencia, Tunis, and Alexandria to Genoa. Now, I could put this last free guy in a better position than Genoa, but I am going to send him here to collect and I'm going to tell him to establish communities once again for the improved relations and so we don't get as much aggressive expansion. Of course, you might not be taking these provinces because they're owned by Aragon at the start, but it is a nice opportunity for me, since Sardinia does exist, to take it. Of course, you could be fighting Aragon when you vassalize Naples and use them to reconquer their course in Sicily, or alternatively, once Castile gets Aragon and forms Spain, if you're allied to them, you could simply use favors to ask for them to return the chorus to Naples. Now, like I said earlier, if Austria stops being the emperor, you should leave the HRE. That's precisely what happened in my game here. The Palatinate became the emperor, and by staying in the HRE like this, we do get a bunch of penalties. So that's why now I'm gonna leave. Austria won't even be mad because they're not the emperor and will still stay easily allied. And there are no other nations in the HRE in Italy, which means we're totally good to go. So I've left it. And these are the effects that get removed. Basically, we had plus three national unrest, a stab cost plus 10% and minus one yearly prestige. We don't get them anymore. And like I said, those bad effects are only if you're not allied to the emperor. If you want to stay, you can just ally the new emperor. I could have allied the Palatinate. <laughs> Or maybe not. And now that my war with Sardinia here is done, I will be full annexing them. These are cheap provinces, so I don't need to worry about aggressive expansion. Now that I've chilled a bit, I'll be declaring my next war. Of course, you'll be doing the same. And this time, I'll be fighting Naples. I'll also call on Austria to help me deal with Venice and Savoy. Once again, we're simply doing opportunistic wars while we take care of the entirety of Italy and maybe a little bit of here and here. At this point, since I have a thousand ducats and I've built all the relevant buildings that I can, I will start the construction on St. Peter's Basilica. Now that my war with Naples is done, here's what I'm gonna do. And you may do something like this as well if they look a little bit like this. Of course, you would probably have vassalized them earlier and then you would be reconquering their course from Aragon or Castile. But in my case, since they look like this, what I'm gonna do is take Messina right here so I can pop out the nation of Sicily and then reconquer Sicily's cores and then I'm gonna take like these provinces over here. Of course I could take a lot more but once again we don't want too much aggressive expansion because we'll be fighting other nations as well and we don't want our conquests to slow down. And no money, no war reps, just this so my truce can expire quicker and I can reconquer Sicily's cores quicker and then full annex Naples. And that's my war with Naples done and like I said I will be popping out the nation of Sicily. And there we go, they have five more cores that I can reconquer from Naples. And since I have a thousand more ducats, because I got burger loans, I could upgrade the Royal Paris of Caserta to level 1, or I could bump up a center of trade to level 3, and that's precisely what I'm gonna do with Rome. And by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as the Papal State and using the amazing powers of being the Pope and being the Curia Controller and by joining the HRE, we were able to easily and for a nation in Italy quite rapidly expand and basically dominate all of Italy and maybe even some other regions by this point as well. Of course, we started off by waiting for Aragon to let Naples go and our first war was with Naples and then we took basically opportunistic wars to fight Siena, Florence or Provence and after after that, we waited for the Ottomans to get into a war with Venice so we can fight them as well. And after that, after we were present in basically pretty much every area of Italy, we were able to declare opportunistic wars and expand wherever. By this point, we should be one of the most powerful nations in the world. As we can see right here, I'm number eight on the Great Powers list. You may be a little higher or maybe a little lower than me. It doesn't matter. It depends on your opportunities. 
You may have vassalized Naples, something I didn't do, and reconquered all of their cores from Aragon, or you may already have all of this directly. You may have more than one subject in the Balkans, you may have recovered all of Dalmatia's cores. It doesn't matter if you've done it by now, all that it matters is that you do the things that I did and play at your own pace and take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you. By now, you should be an extremely, extremely rich nation. As we can see right here, my balance is plus 46 ducats a month. Our total income is about 77. If I lower army maintenance and turn off drilling and turn off all the forts, I'm making about 56 ducats a month right now, which is super, super strong with divine and trade finished and with this policy right here active. Also, my subjects are transferring trade. I've built up a bunch of buildings in all my provinces, as we can see right here, all the marketplaces in all the relevant provinces, workshops in all the relevant provinces, churches here and there as well. A couple of army buildings are being built, and I've built some already, some navy buildings as well, and you will have done the same, and you'll continue to do the same. As we can also see, all my centers of trade are upgraded to level 2. Rome is at tier 3, which is super, super nice. I have two fleets protecting trade in Genoa and in Venice as well, although my merchants that are there are establishing communities just so I can get less aggressive expansion and lower the chance of coalitions forming. Of course, when we own all of Italy, you can just tell these guys to maximize profit. And that's a little what your economy should be looking like by now. After this point, you will continue to expand in the same regions that we've already been expanding in. Of course, like I said, depending on your goal, whether you want to go for a tall-ish campaign or a wide-ish campaign, maybe you want to own all of Italy and you'll continue to do that. You'll continue to chop down all the Italian nations while opportunistically maybe expanding in the south of France, in the east of Iberia. There are a bunch of nations you can pop out of here as well, such as Catalonia, Valencia, Mallorca right here, even Aragon, which doesn't exist in my case. You can also pop out a bunch of nations in the Balkans to reconquer their course from the Ottomans, nations such as Bulgaria, Byzantium, Serbia, Bosnia, and so on. And you can go on to conquer maybe something like Valencia, Ragusa, Genoa, and Venice for a tall-ish campaign. Maybe you'll get some trade companies going in Safi and Tunis. It's totally up to you. You could expand in Tunis if they are weak enough and if they aren't allied to the Ottomans. But basically, you'll continue to spread around this central area of the Mediterranean right here. At this point, I have a super strong army as well. 24-4-7 at this point it seems pretty good as we can see by the combat with. I got 10 galleys and 10 transports over here to help out a little bit, although you will have help from your allies if you've allied France or Castile, which I have allied Castile. And for our first two idea groups, we open up with a divine and trade if you're going for a tall-ish campaign or divine and religious or admin if you're going for a wide-ish campaign. After that, you should continue to unlock more mill idea groups for these slots right here. You could go with quality or quantity for your second mill idea group. We don't really need quantity, but the policies we're going to get from it are super, super awesome and the policies from quality as well are great. Then you can go with offensive and for your non-mill remaining idea groups, you should go with something like economic and then diplo and religious and the final one is probably up to you. For your tier 5, government reform, you should go with a divine nobility if you're planning on blobbing and mercantile tithe if you're planning on playing tall. You could also go with monastic breweries and become a brewery as well. For your tier 6 government reform, this one is really, really strong for land leader fire plus one and even more manpower in true faith provinces, although strength and religious head isn't bad either. For tier 7, if you're going tallish and leaning into the whole trade thing, you should empower the burgers, although be careful of their influence. But if you don't want to take that, you could also embrace the economic theory or embrace free trade. For tier 8, if you're going tall you should go for expulsion of heathens or pursuit of knowledge. If you're planning on blobbing, you should take combat heresy. For tier 9, you should go with divine guidance. For tier 10, you can go with faith and power to have your ruler be a general and have a battle pope active. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, you should go with church and state for plus one free policies. For tier 11, all three of these are good ones. This one gives you guff cap if you need it. You can go with this for even more cheaper advisors and you can take cultural safe haven for even more manpower. And for the final tier, all of these are super, super powerful. Definitely go with this one right here if you're planning on blobbing a whole lot. Otherwise, all other choices are also valid. And like I said, by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk Live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.